Cryptography, a primer for the common man, by Daniel. What is cryptography? Encarta Online defines cryptography as the study of encoding, or the analysis of codes and methods. Or, perhaps the better definition is secret writing, which goes directly to the source of the word, crypto meaning secret, and graphy meaning writing. There are three parts to cryptography. One, the original message, also known as clear text. The ciphering method, which is how you will encode the message. And the ciphered message, which is the final message once it has been encoded. Cryptography has been used for centuries. In fact, there are references to a mathematical crack for a simple substitution cipher going back all the way to the year 800 AD. Cryptography has gotten more complex over time. Originally brain power was all you needed. It's eventually shifted into machine power as devices such as the Enigma machine were designed to aid encryption. And today we use computer power to create encryption that no human could possibly crack. Cryptography is widely used in modern society. Every time you use a credit card, all this information is encrypted before being sent. Wi-Fi signals use various types of encryption, and many online websites, such as bank websites, will also use cryptography to make sure that information is secure. One of the oldest uses for cryptography is war. Since the beginning of war, people have wanted to send battle plans and messages over long distances in a way that would be secure. Originally, this involved hiding messages, but the better way would be to encode them. During the Civil War, cryptography was taught to all officers so that they could send messages amongst each other. In fact, a 147-year-old message directed to General Pemberton was recently deciphered. The message read that help was not on the way. This was shortly before the South lost the war. The United States only entered World War I after the Zimmerman telegram was decrypted. The Zimmerman telegram was a message sent from Germany to the German consulate in New York City. It was encrypted using a simple method of ciphering. Room 40, a British intelligence group, was able to decipher the message and give it to the United States. The message read that should the United States become interested in joining the war, Germany was going to seek Mexico as an ally to fight against the United States. The message was made public and the U.S. entered the war shortly thereafter. In World War II, there was the Enigma machine and the Lorenz machine which were German devices used to encode messages throughout the war. What they didn't realize is that the British had cracked these messages also. By the end of the war, nearly all of the German messages were being read by the Allies. One of the most common types of ciphers is the substitution cipher. This is the type of cipher you might see in a newspaper in the form of a cryptoquote. In this example, A equals J, B equals Q, and so forth. The problem with this kind of cipher is that they're incredibly easy to decipher. The average human can decipher one of these in about 30 minutes. With the aid of a computer, such as this website, it can be solved in a few seconds. No Another common type of cipher is the shift cipher. This is really no more secure than a substitution cipher. It's just another way to generate a simple code. This is the type of code you would find on a code ring, in which all the letters of the alphabet are written out two times. You then shift one set over a specific number of places to generate a new code. If you were to shift three places, such as I've done here, A becomes D, B becomes E, C becomes F, and so on. You can also use a keyed shift cipher in which after shifting, you remove certain letters and place them at the front. If you notice, this keyed cipher has the word dog at the front, D-O-G. 
You then remove the letters later in the alphabet, and the rest of the shift remains the same. Polyalphabetic ciphers were a great leap forward in cryptography. Visionaire cipher was developed in 1553 and used the tabular recta, which I'll show you in just a moment. Unlike earlier ciphers, it required a secret key to unlock the message. It was considered to be unsolvable for centuries. In the 1800s, Kosicki and Kirchhoff developed a mathematical formula to find the length of the keyword. This was originally very complicated, and only a mathematician could really do it. But today, thanks to their method, it is easily solved with computers. This is the tabula recta. Basically, the alphabet is written out 26 times, with a shift by one letter each time. To use the visionary cipher, you start with a keyword, such as the word cat, which I am using here. You then line up this word with the letters in your clear text. For example, I'm using the word hello. Start with the keyword, first letter, C, and line it up with the clear text, first letter, H. That gives you a J. Do the same with A, and the letter E from hello, you get an E. Take the letter T, line it up with L, and you get another E. Notice there are two E's, but they stand for different letters thanks to the keyword. This is why the visionary cipher was so hard to crack for many years. Modern ciphers use complex algorithms instead of simple shifts of the alphabet. The stream cipher, most famously used by the Lorenz machine in World War II, uh, used machines to aid in coding. Other modern ciphers are the public key cipher, in which two keys are required instead of one. One is public, and the other is held to be private. Because the key is partially public, you will need a longer key to equal the security of a shorter key of another method, such as a block cipher. This is the method you can use to encrypt your own email. You'll have to start by getting your public key, which is in the form of a digital security certificate. You can get a free one from Komodo Security. Here's the website. As you can see, uh, it's very simple. All you have to provide is your email address and your name, and you can get your own security certificate. After you've done that, you can integrate it with any modern email program. Most modern computer ciphers are block ciphers, which process the data in blocks of text instead of letter by letter. DES, AES, and WPA2 are a few of the more common block ciphers. Web browsers frequently use many of these to secure websites, such as bank websites, credit card websites, and the like. Wi-Fi uses a number of these ciphers, WEP, WPA, and WPA2. You also find a number of cryptography ciphers in your home computing. MD5, SHA1, NT, NTLM, and many others are used to encrypt files or store passwords on your computer. NT and NTLM, for instance, are used by Windows to store your login passwords. This concludes my brief primer on cryptography.